Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group and we have fabulous new toys. One of the newest things we've just gotten in is the JVC HM100U camera and this thing is awesome. So we wanted to take a quick minute and give you guys an overview of the camera and uh, this is the case that we have it in. So I'll take the camera out of the case and I'll cover the basics of the camera. Now the camera comes with uh, the remote and the batteries and all the other stuff. It comes disassembled but It'll take you 30 seconds to put it together. It's not really that big a deal. So this is the HM100U camera. All right, so let's take a look at the camera. Now here's uh, some cool things. The first thing that for us was the big change is this is our first real professional level camera. We've had other professional cameras around here, but they're all antique, so it's, it's a night and day difference. This one is all digital, it shoots in full HD, and I cannot say enough good things about this camera. It's fabulous. Now, you should know, unlike most of the equipment that we use around here, we did not actually get this donated from JVC. Um, they gave us a bit of a price cut on it, and we thank them for that. But beyond that, we paid for this, and that's kind of a rare thing around here for us. We actually did pay several thousands of dollars for these cameras. We bought two of them, and if you have any questions about the video quality, well, camera number two is the one that we're shooting this on right now. So here's some basics of the camera. Let's take a look at it. All right, on the front of the camera, you've got the lens hood, so we'll take that off a second. Now, on the outside of the lens hood, right here, you have a spot to mount a filter. This takes a 72 millimeter filter, which is pretty big. You can find them at most camera stores. It's not that big a deal. Uh, the lens hood also contains the shutter system here for the lens cover. And that's what the JVC cameras use instead of like the plastic clip-on lens cover. And this way you can't lose it. So that's a good thing. This clips right on here with a simple bay bayonet mount. And there's a smaller 49-millimeter um, filter. Um, actually, it's a 46-millimeter filter on the inside. And you can see we've got one on here, just a simple UV filter. I recommend for anybody out there who has a camcorder that, you know, even if you just buy a consumer grade one, most of them will take a filter. Get a standard UV filter, which is a fancy way of saying piece of glass. That's all a UV filter is, is pretty much a window. And it will help protect your lens from getting abuse on the front of it. So that's always a good thing. And then you just line it up on the bayonet and give it a twist of about a third turn, and it's set. Next thing back is this, which this alone justifies us buying these cameras. It allows us to do manual focus, and that is a wonderful thing. You cannot do manual focus on a lot of the consumer level cameras, and it's a nightmare because a lot of stuff that we do, shots like this where I've got a busy background with a lot of white fade in and out of focus, you'll see this in a lot of our older videos, and the hardest one for us is the high voltage physics stuff. Lightning bolts are a nightmare to try and shoot with autofocus. It just throws a huge wobbly. So now, expect lots of new images of Gemini and Arcturus and Project Mercury and all the other Tesla coils. So the next thing you'll see is the neutral density filter, which is just a little switch. This is fabulous that they built it into the camera. It's great. As a rule, it's real simple. If you're shooting outside, flip it on. If you're shooting inside, flip it off. There's more to it than that, but this is enough just to get your hands around it. Um, next thing back is zoom or focus switch. And if it's set up for focus or down for zoom, depending on which one you have selected, depends on which this does. This isn't just a manual focus ring. It can be used for manual zoom as well. And there's actually three places to zoom on the camera. You can use this. You can use up here on the top, the handheld toggle. Or on the inside of the viewfinder, you can use the little knob here to zoom in or out. So that's kind of cool. There's a couple of user programmable buttons, and you can make them do different things. It's just user one, user two. There's a third one hidden in here. Guaranteed that you'll probably never use the damn thing, but it's in there. Down on the bottom, you've got gain controls, white balance, your autofocus, manual focus switch, the full auto switch, and that's pretty much it for the main controls for video. Up on top is the audio controls, and this is a totally separate unit. You can take this off, but it just hooks on with a simple thumb screw and one cable over here, and this mounts the entire top audio and handle rig. And this is another thing that changes video for us in a big way, because it allows us to have actual XLR inputs. Now the camera has an onboard shotgun microphone, which works really well, especially for close-in presentation stuff. In fact, to give you an idea, right now I'm using my wireless body pack mic, but right 
Now, everything you're hearing is coming from the onboard camera microphone, and I'm standing about 8-10 feet away from the camera right now across a very big echoey room, and it works great. So, the onboard mics are great for close-up, talking head type things. If you want to get like a crowd or something, they can be a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, they've got excellent rejection characteristics, so the microphone is very sensitive to the front, but very not sensitive to the back and sides. Um, we've done some testing with it involving the Steadicam in that, and Mikey shuffles his feet and he's got big clompy boots, and the microphone doesn't pick up the boots or anything like that at all, but it picked up me talking just fine. So that test came out great. It's got a tally light on the front. There's another little tally light built into it, but this one is the one that we always use. You can turn them on or off in different settings in the menus. The other thing that'll let you do is you've got two XLR inputs here, and you can switch what goes where. You can switch it for mic or line. It's got, it's got a built-in 48 volt phantom power. It's got manual or um, automatic levels. It's got knobs for the levels and all that. And there's a cold shoe up on top. There's another cold shoe down here, but you, it gets taken up when you put the handle on. So this way you've still got one to mount like a light or something like that on it. Now here's where we get into one of the coolest features of the HM100U. This little door down here. Because you'll notice there's nowhere on the camera to put a tape. And this isn't one of those with a hard drive built inside. This camera shoots directly to these. SDHC Class 6 compact flash cards. They won't work with anything else. That includes higher. You can't use like a Class 50 or a Class 10 or anything like that. I'm pretty sure a 50 doesn't exist yet, but yeah. Only SDHC 6. It's very fussy like this, but it's worth it. So, and SDH6s are pretty ubiquitous right now. It'll take up to a 32 gigabyte, and that's just fabulous. You just click them in there. It's got two slots for them. And the way it works is this is A and this is B, and there, there'll be a little light that comes on to tell you which card it's writing to. And when it fills up the first card, it starts writing to the second card. And it's beautiful. It's a simple system, and it makes working with the video a lot easier. Because you can pop the cards out of the camera, or the way we do it, on the back there's a USB plug, and it's just a simple USB mini plug. You can plug this right into your computer and just copy the files right off. It records in the MOV format as well as MP4 formats. The MOV will let you drop video directly into like Final Cut Pro and it just magically works. Now there's a whole world of us out there that work in Windows and Linux based systems. So for the rest of us, don't even try to use the damn MOV files. Um, a lot of our other cameras work in MOV files like uh, my, you know, the little camera and stuff like that work in MOV files. But they're JVC, so they just had to throw one little bit of file weirdness in there just to annoy me, I think. And <laughs> the uh, MOV files are some whiz-bang format that I could not get to work in After Effects, Adobe Premiere, or Sony Vegas 9 or 8. So if you can find a way to do that, by all means, comment and let me know because I'd love to be using it. But I couldn't get it to work. And I've got all the big Kodak packs, I got the CCCP, and I've got the Gordian Knot and all that jazz, I couldn't get to work. So maybe there's some hint to it. JVC guys, you could make that better.